Hi everybody, I'm Cyrus Shepard. Uh, I work as a consultant here at Moz, here to introduce our next speaker, who may not be very familiar to MozCon, but she is very familiar to the UK and international speaking circuit. Flavilla Fonggang often appears on the BBC, where she is a brand advisor. That's really cool. She runs an award-winning agency in the UK called the Three Colors Rule. Colors spelled with a U because it's British. Uh, she's an expert on brand. And why is this important? So in SEO, we often talk about the importance of branding in SEO. Like, the more people who search for your term, that's highly correlated with SEO success and your overall rankings overall. But how do you build that brand? That's a challenge we often face. So Flavilla's talk is called The Science of Purchasing Behavior. How to use it effectively to attract and convert more prospects into customers. Please welcome Flavilla Fonggang. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to my talk. My name is Flavilla Fonggang, and today we're going to talk about neural marketing, the science of purchasing behavior. As you know, I like my talks to be super interactive. Are you excited? Are you going to play with me? Are you going to answer my questions as you go along? I'm going to be in the chat box, and I'm going to be answering some of your questions, commenting. So please tell me, are you ready to get engaged and play with me? Yes? All right, let's get started. So probably like this amazing, good-looking gentleman, you're probably wondering, why should I care about new marketing, you gorgeous woman? Well, the answer is very simple. So the first question I want to ask you is, how much money do you think you've lost for your marketing campaign, your advertising activity? So I'm going to start adding some numbers. So give it some numbers. How much money over, over the years, how much money maybe looking at the marketing industry in general, or maybe just you as the company or the companies that you work for, how much money do you think you've lost? And I keep adding the signal, the pound, you know, bags into it until you, you tell me to stop. I think I'm going to stop right there. The answer is brilliance. Brilliance is wasted every single minute, every second, second in poor marketing campaign that don't deliver. And the only person who's getting rich right now is Google and Facebook. So let's change that. No offense to Facebook and Google, they didn't well as well. The problem is that most of the time, people don't tell us what we want to hear they don't tell us what we need to hear, they tell us what we want to hear. And there's a big difference between that. And I love this photo. It's the best representation in terms of how people behave when it comes to how they present or have conversation with consumers, especially in those type of focus groups. So yes, do you want the donuts or do you really want the salad? So the truth is not what he's actually saying. Yeah, And I love that. Before we really get started, I really give an introduction in terms of why new marketing is so relevant. I want to really get you started in understanding in terms of how the relationship with customers have evolved, consumers has evolved for the years. And again, I'm going to get you to play with me. Are you ready? Yes. And then try to see if you can guess in which era we are in right now. So let's start from the beginning. If you think about it, you know, when we look at advertising and how things used to be done, it was very much around how to use the product. You know, you think about microwave or fridge or anything like that, it was very much very functional marketing presentation. Then after that, the move to people realized, well, I don't really want to have exactly the same house, the same product as my neighbor. Or maybe I also don't want to wear the same type of trainers as everybody else. Or maybe I have different type of activities. So people wanted choices. If they wanted choice, they wanted to be it was very much about the image, how you present your product, which is very important. So think of it, if you're like me, you probably have a pair of trainers for different type of activities that you do, which also makes sense. Or maybe it's just another marketing campaign. Who knows? Yes. So what do you think happened? What do you think happened right there? And I want to give you a clue. It was a bit of a revelation. I realized that they had to do better. Especially for Nike, which was already doing really bad when it comes to corporate social responsibility and choosing how their shoes were being made was very important. So yes, they had to realize, well, wait a minute, I don't want to wear a pair of trainers, but it's made by kids in a third world country. How does it make me feel? No, you know, so companies need to do something more in terms of their social response, um, their corporate responsibility, and we make better choices, fair trade choices, to make sure that um, people in third world country were not uh, abused. And therefore, you know, that creates the massive impact and they had to do better. After that, you probably heard about this more than once, Simon Sinek and the magic of starting with why. 
And you, you know, if you think about Nike style now, right now, they barely present or focus on the product. They focus much more in terms of how you, you know, drive people from, you know, achieving greatness or maybe social causes or anything like that. That's very much where they are. And I think it's still very relevant, even though we are in a new era. So my question to you, if you are really good and if you've been following everything that I've been telling you right now, where do you think we are? I'm going to give you a clue. It involves your mobile phone or your smartphone. What is it? We are in an era of digital, digital transformation, digital transformation, digital era where everything is, is happening for our phone. If, if you ask someone, can you live with your phone for a day or even seven days and I give you a million pounds, a lot of people will tell you no, because we're so addicted to our phone. But also what it means is that the consumers, customers control a lot of the messaging. And that's why it becomes even harder. And that's why also you have to think about your consumers, not so much as just buyers, but also a community. Do you have the community of people that look or behave or, or trust the same ideas? Or is it just people who are randomly buying from your product and don't have any, are not faithful to your brand? So if you don't have that, this is the first question I want to ask you. Do you have consumers or do you have a community? The community gives you the power not only to build loyalty, but also, you know, referrals, and obviously your growth and extension of your brand. The way your product is proud, is part of your daily lifestyle. People share so much about what they do. Are you in this era? And that's what I want you to understand. This is my first revelation. I hope you enjoy that. This is where we are. Whatever you are B2B, whatever you are B2C, this has become relevant. All right? Make sense so far? Yes? Good? All right. I have a question for you. Do you believe you're in control of yourself? Do you believe in control? You woke up this morning and you realize, you know, I'm going to be here. I'm going to attend the Mars conference and learn new things with all these marketers. So you feel that, yes, I'm in control of myself and I'm in control of my destiny. Yes, you believe so? Yeah, yes, no, people are saying yes. Okay, good. All right, so let's do a little game. Yes, you have an exercise today, you're going to exercise today. All right, with your right hand, I want you to draw number six in the air. Yeah, and with your right leg again, so only use the right part of your body, I want you to turn your leg clockwise. And you, I want you to do it as fast as possible. Are you ready? Let's do it. It's usually at, at this moment that I start laughing because I obviously realize that you are probably struggling and wondering what happened to your body right now. And I hope you're laughing. You know, I'm not a sorcerer. I'm not a witch. I promise. This is just something that you can't control. Some people are really good at it, but most of the time, you know, you try to fight the obvious. All right. So let's talk about the brain. I have another question for you. Yeah. So how many brain do you think we have? How many brain do we think we have? One, two, five, six. Well, it's a tricky question. It's actually a tricky question. We only have one brain, but the brain is divided in three parts. You have your neocortex, you have your limbic system, and you have, of course, your reptilian brain. So I'm going to guide you through in terms of what each brain and how much they impact on one another so you can understand. The first part of your brain is your neocortex, which is the biggest, which is your rational brain. It really controls your imagination, your consciousness, your behavior. So if you think about right now, you are definitely using your neocortex because it requires you to think about existence or just learn new skills, or maybe just, does God exist? Is it chicken and egg situation? What is life about? What is my purpose? And a lot of people don't use that part of the brain. I have to tell you the truth, a lot of people don't use that part of your brain. But you are using it, and that's something that I'm really proud of, yes? The second part is the limbic system. The limbic system, motion, your behavior, judgment. You probably decided by that point, yeah, I like her, or I don't like her, I don't know what she is, I don't understand her accent, or whatever it is, but you're here, yeah? You're gonna, you're gonna be stuck, stuck with me for a bit. So yes, yeah, so think about it like how you react after a breakup, are you quick to move on? Are you, you know, you binge in food? I'm probably that kind of person. I, I tend to binge with food, <laughs> to be honest. Or you just, you know, go, you know, and suck yourself in a burrito watch Netflix all day. Whatever you are, that's a part of the brain that you're using right now. And the last one is your reptilian brain. Your reptilian brain, I also like to call it the lazy brain. It's known as your primitive brain. Its job is to keep you alive. Basically, it will control all your body vital functions, flight or fight response. So if you're facing a challenge, what do you do and how do you react? You know, if there's a bear in front of you, would you stay or would you go? I really hope that you would go because it's not the best thing to do to stay, okay? All right, I have another question for you. Which part of the brain has the most control? Please tell me, is it A, the reptilian brain, B, the limbic system, or C, the neocortex? I'm giving you 10 seconds to write your answer.
All right, you've written your answer. All right, let's get cracking. We're going to do another game. You know, I told you we're going to play a game, and I'm going to let you not be active on my talk. So I want you to read out the color, not the word. Really, read out the color, not the word. And I know you can do this. Are you ready? Let's get started. Pink, gray. That was easy, right? Yeah, pretty easy. Are you ready to do it again, but much faster? Okay, yep, yeah, let's do it. This is also usually the part where I start laughing, yes? <laughs> When I can see you struggling and trying to articulate, am I reading the word? Am I reading the color? What is going on? You're probably like, what just happened? Why I cannot read this word or read the colors properly and I'm reading the word? Well, the brain, let me explain how the brain works. Yes? If tomorrow, you know, if you think about it, last time you probably just went to a restaurant, yes? And you think about, okay, I chose this restaurant. If you really had to use, you know, all the part of your brain to make a decision, it would take you a long time. So what the brain is, 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 look at the brain as a computer, which really gathered a lot of data. And when we face a situation where we have to make a quick answer, we usually go back to what we know. And that's why also people choose brand. Yes, I love to tell these stories. I remember when I went, arrived in Mexico with my brother, and I, I've told this story so many times because it's such a fun story. We arrived in Mexico and in Cancun, and we're like, yes, exciting, what are we going to do? We have like literally decided to do five cities in two weeks. And uh, we see this long queue of people and wonder what the hell is happening. I've been serving Margarita already at the airport. This is the best airport ever. We were like full of hope and probably just a bit naive. And when we look at the, at the beginning of the queue, what we see is basically Americans queuing for Starbucks coffee. So I was very really confused by it. I figured like you travel all this way and then you go and get the Starbucks coffee. But again, that's normal because when it comes to brand, we choose what we know, we recognize what we know. And that's the best way to do that. And that's why I'm in branding and this is what I do, what I do. So think about it. Like we are very much, you know, again, we don't, as I say, we don't use a neocortex very often. Or if we don't use a neocortex very often. So we go back to what we know. So we have to make quick decisions. And also when we face, you know, situations, again, remember, our brain is trying to keep us alive. So we go back to what we know. Yes. Let me explain what just happened. I've just created a brand conflict. Yes, I could have brain conflict between what you know and what I'm trying to change. And therefore your brain is reacting. It's like, oh, I disagree. It's really creating a problematic response in your mind. And really just explain that, you know, as I explained it before, we are quite often on autopilot. It would take us too much time to have to make a decision if we are to analyze every single element. Think about it. Like if you had to, every time think when you get into a cab, I was like, oh, do I need to check? I need to check his ID. I need to check where is he from. I need to check this. I need to check the engine under the car. I need to check this. Your brain needs to make this quick decision. So it looks at what it knows already to make this happen. And quite often, <laughs> that's why we either make great choices or bad choices. If you think about it, then the reptilian brain has the greater impact on your final decision, more than the neocortex or even more than the limbic system, which is obviously controlled via emotions. So the reptilian brain, we are somehow, you know, often on autopilot. We always think that we make decisions fully aware. We are definitely not rational. So it's definitely not the neocortex. Yes, so far so good. Yes. Okay, let's carry on. I'm going to start by giving you the complicated way of <laughs> the complicated way to do neuromarketing marketing and, and the simplest way. So you can choose between the complicated way, which is some of those things, and the one that you were a bit more simpler. So which one would you like? Would you like the complicated way or the Simple way. Tell me. I'm going to be in the comment. Yeah? Okay. So whatever you choose, I'm going to give you both. And it's up to you to choose what you want to do. Just bear in mind that some of these options, obviously, are great when you're doing a massive million-pound campaign. You're working for one of these large companies, and they have given you a survey budget. Yes? And that helps you, especially when you're launching a new product. It's very important. So the first one, I'm not even going to try to read it. <laughs> I'm going to read the abbreviation. And really, it's a device that analyzes and registers the brain's electromagnetic activity. Yes. So, I, I, you know, every time I look at this, I think, like, if somebody actually woke outside with this on their head, I really think, think this is a crazy person who just come back of the asylum. So, yes, so that's one of the examples that you can use to really identify how, you, how your consumer or prospect are reacting to maybe an advert or maybe how they're looking at the packaging or anything that you do, or maybe just a text copy. Yes. The second one is your FMRI, functional magnetic resonance, something you can see how the brain, you know, activities depending on what they're showing. So really it's also good around emotion, 
you want to see how people are reacting more, for, for example, more res res responsive to negative or positive emotion, it's a great way to see. And also how, what they decide to do after the, uh, the, the bubble of emotion that came out of their body. So good to know. The second one I love that one is also facial coding. If you know me by now, I'm really not good at hiding my emotion when I don't like someone. <laughs> I just don't like someone. But some people are really good at hiding their emotion. And what is good about the facial coding, it will also pick up the involuntary movements of your facial muscles. Again, so I think all of these products, all this technology is there to help you, again, for a campaign, a product launch, a copy, Living around your marketing, but also your branding, but also your innovation. So think about it just deeper than just marketing. So you can really just maybe work alongside of the department to get this in the budget approved and see what's what. And the last one is eye tracking. Look for your consumer's eyes. So effective. This is something that was introduced by a number of brands. Google also launched their own product. When you create a packaging, I love, I do a lot of packaging creation. And you can see exactly what people pay attention to, what really matters to them. So this is, again, another tool. Very, very effective. All right. So now, this is one thing I want to bring up. Before you, again, same thing. We talk about how much money was wasted before. And we, want, we don't want to be one of them. We are better. This is what we're here today. And I want you to talk about consumer relation, but also understanding what you're trying to achieve. As you know, we marketers, you know, before we start doing anything, we have clarity in terms of what we're trying to achieve. But it's very important to understand what are your purpose of exactly your positioning, your purpose of your campaign. So the first question to ask yourself really, is it a client retention or a client acquisition? Because that would be completely different between somebody who knows me already or, or as a customer or somebody who doesn't know me. Yes? The second question you need to ask yourself, are you trying to get go through a market expansion or is it a new market? Does the market know you or the market doesn't know you? It begins very different. And the last one, remember, is always 80 to 80% 80 brand and 20% product. Yes? If you think about Nike, yes, they barely do any big campaign focusing on a new product. They focus much more on their vision, their purpose, you know, strategy for status quo and defining social movements and so forth. So really think about those elements when you create content. Because that relationship with your customer will be completely different. And if you are trying to sell to a new client instead of selling to an existing customer, you're definitely not going to have the same impact. Yes? So bear that in mind before you start any campaign. Right? Does it make sense? Yes? Good? Is it good so far? Fantastic. I'm glad to hear. All right. So now I told you I'm going to talk about the simplest way of doing new marketing by using all the technology. Okay? The good thing about what I like about those techniques is it doesn't require you to have, you can test it, change it, see which one works, and yeah, improve it as you go along. You know, as you know, marketing is continu continuous improvement, and that's just what, that is what it is all about. So there's a six stimuli to the reptilian brain. Remember, the reptilian brain has the biggest impact on our choices because we are by nature, remember, lazy, we love convenience. And that's why technology brands are doing so well. That's why Amazon is becoming a bigger fan giant every day. All right. So diagnose the pain or desire. self centered I'm going to explain in a minute. Differentiate your claims with a contrast, demonstrate the gain, tangible, and then deliver to the reptilian brain with beginning and end, visual and emotion. We're going to break it down so you can see what's what. So the first one I want to start about is the pain and desire. And again, I love to tell, you know, I like to tell personal stories. Um, <laughs> first time when I arrived in London, as you can see from my accent, I'm French. And um, I was very lucky I had an English boyfriend only a couple of months after moving in. We had a massive argument and I'm a cancer. I'm emotional, so I'm impulsive. I don't really think really that's the part of the brain that is called the limbic system that I use quite often. Yes. And I decided to buy a ticket and I bought a ticket on, um, I think it was EasyJet for something like 30 pounds at the time. It was very cheap, but I didn't think about getting to, <laughs> to, to the airport. So I left too late and then I had to jump into a black cab. Yes. So try to imagine the bill at the end of arriving was 80 pounds, but I was clever enough to, to cry all the way through <laughs> the journey on the taxi figure. Like, am I crying because I'm upset with my boyfriend or am I crying because I'm seeing the, the, the counter getting faster and faster and bigger and bigger? And I think if I'm very sorry for me, I'm only charging 50% of the price. So I was very happy. But just think about life. Yes, taxi life before Uber. Yes. How much painful was it? It was horrible. Especially if you're like me, you live in London where it rains most of the time. Yes. Waiting for your train, your, your taxi outside is definitely not a pleasant journey. So think about it. We are all self-centered. 
We love options that allows us to make our life easier. So make your customer the hero of the story. What is great about this ad, she looks, she, she looks so relaxed. So it's not an ad, it's actually a website at the time. She looks so relaxed, so calm. I mean, life is, seems to be much better for her and it's, it's sun and everywhere. Even you can see here on the, on the heat map, putting your call to action next to your customer as a center point improves it. So you can say, remember your customer is very much me, me, self-centered. So give them a reason to actually feel like that. So how are you stimulating desire or pain? Remember, those two emotions are very strong. So use those two to really get out of your story and to get the message across. So again, saving, that's why, again, saving as a branding agency, I always say to people, be very clear in terms of your niche. If you're serving everyone, then well, you're not serving anybody. Let's be realistic about that. Differentiate your claim. I love this one. This is an old one, but still a very good classic. You know, you were either a Mac or either a PC. <laughs> it took me a long time to become a Mac, but at the end of the day, I became one. Not because of that advert, but at the time, it was very effective. So think about it. We are very good at re recognizing contrast. Again, it doesn't have to be a brand against another. It can be, think about a personal trainer, before and after. That's why I always like to put website on, my, on our website, like rebrand before the brand and after the rebrand. So you can see the difference, what we've done, what we accomplished for this client. So think about this well for your brand. Make it easy for them to see, yes, you're the one I want to work with. Again, something touching the desire aspect, but also I can see what you've done and I trust you for that. Yes, you can use contract. Monzo did a very great campaign. They realized the pain of having to wait 24, you know, until 8 o'clock to speak to your bank, not 24 7. You know, sometimes you have, that's what I love about working technology, is that sometimes you have people, small businesses who come in and just disrupt there. And they just say, you know what, let's redefine the norm. Because other people are there, a giant, and they're just fat ones who just don't want to do better. And we're going to come and disrupt it and, and win, some, win some market share. So that's why I'm going to talk about innovation later on, but that's why it's so important. Does it make sense? Yes, you agree with me? Yeah. I'll tell you some of the contests that are very effective. Financial outcomes are good for that. Appearance and love. Everybody wants to be loved. And freedom. Everybody wants more time. We never have enough time. And come on. We already through <laughs> after 2021. Where have you been going? Come on. This is amazing. So, yeah. So, think about those contrasts, which are very effective. All right. Demonstrate the game. This is probably one of my favorite ones. If I was married and I didn't like my husband and I'm to get married, I would go to that person. Because look at that plate number. <laughs> this is the best plate number ever, was his. Come on. Yes, I can tell you how good I am or I can just show you. So, yeah, I like the idea of showing you and telling you. So that works really, really well. Demonstrate the value of your offer. If this is a divorce lawyer, it's perfect. Love it. Again, so I think what is the most painful thing when you obviously have a phone and you're out and you forgot to bring your extra char charger is the battery. Yes. And then I love this campaign, which again for iPhone shock is that, you know, the battery will last longer than actually you will. So there you go. Again, another way to you know, visually express what you're trying to do. You don't have to say a lot of things. And that's what I love about Apple. They never talk about all the functionalities of their phone. They always focus on one thing. If you give to me sometimes too many things, which is not the most important problem your, your customer or your prospect is trying to solve, what's the point? You don't have to say, oh, sometimes people speak too much. Just say the right thing and that's enough. I love what this campaign was. A campaign done by a discount stores, um, Lidl. If you don't know Lidl, it's like a discount stores in the UK. And they really challenge people in terms of, again, if you remember, people trust brands. Very effective here. Really showcasing exactly how we perceive in terms of what we believe is the quality and the brand. So show what they did. They put two plates, one cheese from the expensive brand, or well, not expensive, well, and obviously, most people choose the well-known brands. Like, yeah, so much manner because it's this, it's, it's cathedral. Then they realize, actually, we made a mistake. We actually put the wrong brand together. And you can see the shock on people's face. And that was so effective, not only to get more customers to come to this. It's like, whoa, okay, that's probably not the image I had of this discount store. Quality doesn't mean that it has to be expensive. And that changed everything for them. And it's still one of the most, um, most organized and most rewarded supermarkets right now. They're doing well. Beginning and end, again, same thing, we have a very short attention span. So if you really want your customer to do something, think about putting the most important information at the beginning and repeating again at the end. Men, you know, as we know, we love call to action. CTA has to be part of it. Visual and image is worth, is worth a thousand words. Yes. So again, same thing, I'm very strong on visual. 
So you can tell me what you do, but you can show me it's much more effective. So use very strong features that really emphasize what you're trying to talk about, because we will remember that. Again, something of us is an advert from Samsung to showcase the how great like having your you know a singer or rapper in your ear is the equivalent of having those products. That's effective, that's cute, I love that. Emotion, yes. I remember I mentioned I'm a cancer, so I'm super emotional. <laughs> Go help it. And yes, so those kind of things work for me. But you know, with anything, positive emotions are great, but negative emotions are even more effective. And we tend to be more responsive to that. Again, something I guess we are human who love to be at the blood, you know, uh, wound to be <laughs> deep down into it. And it works really well. So that's another campaign from uh, Uber, was also very effective. And again, something that one, if you want to get people to give money, yeah, you can say, I mean, I, had, I would feel very bad if I go to a store and I don't give money to those people after having a campaign like that. But it's super effective, that works really well and get the result done. Yeah, so you know you. The thing is that you can choose between positive and negative emotion when again understanding you test your audience and see how they respond. Testing, test, testing is the secret of marketing success. Yes, it's never all right or wrong. Have you enjoyed it so far? Do you want one more mind hack? I feel like you've been enjoying. Give me, put some comments if you like it. And I'll give you one more. Why is it just wrap it right now? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm going to give you one more hack. Okay, so look at that photo. Where did you look? Where did you think your eyes went? Your eyes, I can bet your eyes went straight to the baby. And after that, you looked at the pot. This is why it's called the power of the gaze. The power of the gaze is super powerful. And I've seen so many times people using it wrongly on their website. So really pay attention in terms of when you put photos on your website, and especially we are drawn to the gaze. So if you want people to go into a certain direction, use it very wisely. This is a very effective campaign because we know we love most amazing social shares are always babies, cats, dogs. I must say I love them. And yes, yeah, so this is effective. It's a product for babies. At the same time, you can see that baby is licking his lip. Very excited about the product. Very great campaign. Again, here I'm going to show you so you can see. Here, you can see where on the heat map, where the attention is driven. And then now, look after. Yes? So you can use that power to give directives in terms of where you want people to look. The power of the gaze. You see, you just now got a sip of power. Don't tell me I'll give it to you. Now you have it. All right? All right. Most people focus only on one or two cents, which is quite often vision and touch. Can you do more? Da, 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 da. If I just say that, you know which brand is out. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's McDonald's, of course. Why are you not touching all the five senses of your brand? Something like you think about Apple, you recognize exactly an Apple product. It's always the same texture, always the same color. But think about if you can use the five, explore the five senses of your brand to really am amplify brand adoption, but also loyalty. I challenge you to do that tomorrow. Okay, maybe not tomorrow. It's a bit too soon, but see what's going on. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. So let me just summarize the, the six stimuli of a reptilian brain. So you have diagnosis of pain and desire. Remember that? Self-centered, it's always me, me, me first. Differentiate your claim with contrast. Yes, demonstrate the game with tangibility. Devolve and, and deliver to the reptilian brain with beginning and end, the most important information at, at the beginning and repeat it at the end. Visual and emotion, negative or positive, depending on how your target audience is the most responsive. Was it good? Did you enjoy it? It's not finished. I have more. I always have more. I always give more. I should be a personal trainer and say, like, it's finished. Yeah, I'm finished. Finished. Then there's more. Okay, well. <laughs> anyway, let me come back. There's one assumption we need to talk about. You're thinking, what, are you, what, what, what assumption? What are you talking about? So I want you to think about a brand that you really like. Just think about a brand that you really like. Yes? And I want you to tell me why do you like this brand so much? Tell me, or in a comment, I'm there. I like this brand because of that. You think about the brand that you like and you, you buy the most, is they quite often always try to exceed your expectation. Their job is not to say, hey, they're happy. I guess we need to stop here. So think about yourself. What are you doing right now to really exceed your customer's expectation? I love what Carla Gaffer say. We must always surprise. If you never had a chance to watch one of Carla Gaffer's fashion catwalk or fashion show, I recommend to go on YouTube and watch it. They are breathtaking. And every single season, you will be the same. You would have thousands of people waiting outside, fashion celebrities and so forth, waiting to see a Carla Gaffer 
fashion show. It's beautiful. And again, to think I come from the fashion world and I've worked in oil and gas and all sorts of industries. And that's probably the reason why I've always looked in terms of how can we do different and how can I, you know, our work clients come from different backgrounds. And I think they love that idea that I can fuse informa information and knowledge from one industry and we apply it to another one. You know, so what are you doing today to surprise your customers? If you haven't done anything, time to think about it so you can do better. Yeah. So go beyond the expected. Go beyond the expected, but to support their ultimate goals. And my question to you is, do you know what the ultimate goals are? When someone buys a car, they just don't buy a car to drive. They buy a car because maybe they're looking for freedom. They buy a car maybe because they're looking for adventure. They buy a car maybe because they just want to impress a girl. So are you able to understand the ultimate goals of your customers, able to communicate that? That makes a big difference when you get that. And that's what allows you to go beyond. There's another talk I'm doing on this, but not this one. All right. So you can obviously go beyond by innovating. So make this part of your brand DNA. Or you can go beyond by just doing a number of strategic alliances. Who can you align with who has the same customers as you? Come on. It could be so many options. I love this option. I love this example from Coca-Cola and uh, Mike ja Mark Jacobs, a fashion designer. I guess they did this collection for London Fashion Week. I think it was actually New York Fashion Week. And again, something very clever, but not the urgency. So obviously, it had to be diet coke because of the fashion world don't eat. Yes, I don't know what they're missing in life, not eating shortbread, which is amazing. And obviously, they know that, yeah, so you know your audience, who, what, what collaboration would work, and make it amazing, make it different. That's how you keep getting your customer excited about buying from you. We are by nature, you know, we, if you, you know, sending whatever it is, a, a brand or whatever it is, a personal relationship, what are you doing right now to make your relationship exciting? So really think about it as a relationship, whatever it is personal, whatever it is business, what are you doing right now to make this relationship exciting? And I love, again, this one, you know, between flowers and chicken, I probably would want to choose chicken. I'd be very happy with the Valentine's chicken and a card, then flowers I would die tomorrow. Yes, I know for you. What, actually, tell me in the chat box, would you prefer chicken or flowers? <laughs> I don't want to prefer chicken, yes, unless you're vegan, then you can stick to the fries. So yes, so think about what can you do to surprise your customers tomorrow that will excite them. All right, one more goodies, as you know, I have a course that you can take right now. This is just a sample of what's in this course. You can start for free. Visit freecolorzoo.com slash flavela or coachings.flavelafonging.com to check it out. Start for free. And obviously, I was busy during COVID-19 and decided I'm finally going to write a book. And I wrote a book called 99 Strategies to Attract Customers. So yes, I'm really helping you right now. It's on Amazon. It's available everywhere. It has five stars. I get lots of reviews and I'm so, so happy and delighted. And again, you can find on our website, our agency website, freecolorzo.com, our free report called the Decoding, Decoding Consumers in the Tech Sector, which is obviously our sector of focus. I hope that you enjoy my talk. And you know you can find me on most social media. I'm very active on LinkedIn, on Instagram and Twitter. And yeah, connect with me. I'll be there. And I hope that you're not going to stay there and not apply what I've told you today. But at least pick one thing and don't wait more than a day to apply it and see the change that you can make today. Thank you.